What makes quantum computing somewhat controversial? There are many reasons why quantum computing is relevant and is going to change all of our lives. Number one is Feynman's observation. He was thinking in the context of physics. If you have a physics problem that is quantum mechanical, you shouldn't be using a deterministic machine to solve that problem. Well, in finance, it happens the same. In finance, we work with random variables. We don't know what are going to be the outcomes of various phenomena. And yet, we are using deterministic machines to solve probabilistic problems. It makes no sense. It's not the efficient way to do it. We should be using probabilistic machines that rather than simulate random variables, operate with the random variables. A second, I guess, more compelling argument is that Moore's law is finished. We have been living for the past 30 years an incredible era where computers became more and more powerful. But that's finished. Back in 2012, the number of transistors that you can buy per dollar has peaked. It's just that you cannot put more transistors. You know, there, you need a few atoms in between the transistors. It, physically, it's impossible to keep up. So what is going to happen? From now on, we are going to keep buying transistors that are a little bit, a little bit faster. It's going to cost us a lot of much more money but they are going to be a little bit faster. And eventually, foundries will stop producing new microchips because the research costs will not pay for the profits, for the benefits. So the digital computing era is about to end. We need something to replace it. And right now, the best candidate is quantum computing. Uh, quantum computing, on the other hand, is it's at its dawn. It's just beginning. It's it's something that, can, that holds the promise of given, giving us the computational power we need for artificial intelligence. I, I, I love the, when the previous uh, speaker uh, said, we have not seen artificial intelligence yet. I couldn't agree more. We have not seen artificial intelligence yet because we don't have the computing machinery that artificial intelligence needs. We are using Abacus to solve the kind of problems that machine learning and, uh, and deep net, uh, neural networks, artificial intelligence in general needs. We're using abacus. We need machines that can truly show us the potential of artificial intelligence. And here is the, I guess, the poetic aspect of it. Nobody really knows how a quantum computer works because this quantum mechanics, right? As soon as you try to look into what is going to happen, what is happening in the system, you are perturbing the system and the system changes its state. So I think it's going to be very interesting when we recognize that in order to develop artificial intelligence, in fact, we need a kind of machinery that we don't truly understand. I guess it's happening already. We're using our brains and we don't truly understand how they, how they work. Well, the same we will have to do with quantum, uh, with quantum computers. We will have to use some machines to develop artificial intelligence where we don't actually understand how these machines truly work. Is this, this is uh, um, something that is um, very controversial. You will hear many experts that are opposed to use machinery that they don't truly understand every aspect of it. But as a matter of fact, it's showing results. And I welcome to the future. I hope you visit this website called quantumforquants.org. There is plenty of materials there. We have put it together a couple of weeks ago. It's an online community where we discuss various problems that are interesting in this area where these problems can provide true added value that is worth a fee and that is worth um, the effort that society is putting in, in these problems. Thank you very much.